Hey, thanks for checking out a message here at Hoboken Free Church. We are so glad that you stopped by to check us out. If you are in the Hoboken area, we invite you to connect with us at one of our community groups or at our Sunday gatherings when we open back up. If you'd like more information about us, you can check us out at hobokenefc.org. But again, we're glad that you're here to check out a message, and we hope you have a blessed day. We're just glad that everybody's here, so welcome. Welcome to everybody online. Um, here at Hoboken Free, we want to be all about one thing, and that is being all about Jesus and passionately pursuing Him. And we do that in three ways here at Hoboken Free. First, we want to be stirred by Scripture. We passionately pursue Jesus by being stirred by Scripture. That means we get into God's Word on a daily basis. We read it, we study it, we meditate on it. We allow it to penetrate our hearts and our minds to stir us on to action for Him. Secondly, we want to passionately pursue Jesus by struggling well with life together. That means that we get into community with one another. We do life authentically, transparently with one another. We share everything with one another in the hopes and the challenge of challenging one another to pursue Jesus relationally as we pursue one another relationally. And that's just not here in our community groups. We want to passionately pursue Jesus by struggling well with life together outside of our church community here at Hoboken Free. That means our Hoboken community, our Jersey City community, our Secaucus community, our Union City community, wherever it is that we live, or our New York community, wherever we work, Wherever that is, we want to struggle well with life together because it's in those moments as followers of Christ where we can really truly show the hope and the joy that we have in Jesus with those around us. And so we want to struggle well with life together at being on mission in our communities as well as we struggle well with life together. And then lastly, we want to, be, we want to passionately pursue Jesus by serving others. And I dove deep into this one last week, right? Um, even making many points of this into um, <clears throat> the message on Sunday as well. But, you know, we do. And, and I'm thankful for those of you who signed up last Sunday uh, to help in, those, in the different areas that we have. And this is on me. I forgot to bring the papers back up here. So if you wanted to sign up this week, but if you do want to sign up to help serve in any of the areas, whether that's cleaning you know, children's ministry, IT, as far as audiovisual stuff, um, setting up and tearing down before and after the service, greeting, all those different areas, worship team. Scott is the guy to talk to, and Scott is one of the guys that always um, welcomes you when you're coming in on Sunday morning. Scott, raise your hand just so everybody can see you. There you go. Go, go talk to him after our gathering this morning, and he will get you connected. We're having some trainings this week to get you set up to serve, but we want to passionately pursue Jesus by serving others in this local community or serving others in our community as a whole, right? And so we want to passionately pursue Jesus that way because Jesus first came to serve us and so we go and serve others because of that. So that's who we are. That's who we are. That's who we are. I could talk. That's who we are here at Hoboken Free and we just invite you to join us on that journey. As Mark said in the announcements, um, on July 17th we're going to be having a baptism service. We're going to do this one a little differently this time. The two people that have already signed up that want to be baptized have requested to be baptized in the ocean, which is awesome. So much fun. I, I haven't done this in a long time. It is really cool. Um, at my first church we used to do them in the Delaware River. Um, I don't think either one of them really want to get baptized in the Hudson River, so we're going to avoid that one. Um, but I've done them in the ocean, I've done them in pools, I've done them, you know, in rivers, and it's really, it's, it'll be really cool. So we're going to go down to Ocean Grove on July 17th. The times are still being ironed out of what time we're going to meet and what time we're going to do it. Most likely in the evening, like closer to like 4 or 5 o'clock at night. Um, which is really cool because if we do it at Ocean Grove at that time, by the time we're done, at 6 o'clock there's always worship in the little pavilion on the boardwalk there in Ocean Grove. And so we can stick around and, and, and enjoy the worship uh, that day as well. And so I'm inviting you to join us in Ocean Grove on July 17th um, as we do this baptism. And if you would like to get baptized, if this is something you're interested in, please speak to me after our time this morning and we will get you connected with the baptism class that we're going to be having in the next week or so. And so um, we're just inviting you to that. We're really excited about that. Um, I, she'll probably be really upset with me for announcing this, but this is like for me is like one of the coolest things I think I get to do as a pastor and as a dad. My oldest is going to be one of the ones who's getting baptized at the beach. And so just really awesome. 
And so, yeah, so um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to stop talking about that before I start getting emotional and, and everything else, because it's never good when I get emotional. Okay, so, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's really cool. So we're really excited about that. And so if you are interested in baptism and getting baptized, please talk to us and, and you can meet us down there. And then, you know, that's not the only, we're going to do more and more here as well. Um, and so please let us know if that doesn't work for you, we will find one that does. All right. Um, I think that's it. So we've been walking through, uh, we're in our fifth week now of the Sermon on the Mount series that we've been going through. And I've, I'm really thankful. Um, you guys have been giving me great feedback and how, how much the, the series has been impacting you and challenging you. And so that's really cool. Uh, I love being able to hear that. So I know that, you know, at least I'm tracking in the right way. And, and, and God, you know, is, I, I trust that God is always moving and working, but it's just great to hear those things. And so um, so thank you for that, and I'm really glad that it is, if, you know, touching you and, and impacting you and challenging you. You know, and we've talked about some pretty crazy stuff, right? In the last two weeks alone, we talked about anger two weeks ago, and then last week we talked about, you know, uh, adultery and marriage and remarriage and divorce and all the topics, and, you know, there's some heavy stuff. Guess what? This week's no different. And we're going to talk about something that we all struggle. I don't, you know— I think millennials get a bad rap for this, right? They get a huge, like anyone 30 and under, 35 and under gets a really bad rap for this topic that we're going to talk about today, and that's commitment, right? We, we always say millennials, well, they're just, they're just not committed. They're not, but, well, you know what? I don't care how old you are. I think every generation and every people group struggles with this topic, struggles with this uh, discipline in their lives of commitment. You know, it's not something that's just specifically given to, you know, younger people. It is something that we all struggle with. To, to, to stand by what we say we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And Jesus has some, some, some strong words on it, but he also has a really great <clears throat> lesson for all of us to follow in this as well. And so, <clears throat> you know, when I thought about, you know, commitments and, and those kind of things, um, back in high school— um, I was, so I was in the, on the basketball team in high school, but I was also part of the chorus and the band. Um, and there's reasons behind that. <clears throat> I wasn't, like, I like singing, so chorus wasn't a big deal. Band, eh, I could take it or leave it. Um, wasn't, like, my favorite thing in the world to do, but the only reason I did band was because my parents always had us involved in something each semester, each season, we had to be involved in something. And so in the fall, at my school, there, there were a few options you had for the, for the boys. Uh, you had uh, soccer, which I was never any good at, so that was off the table. Um, you had football, which, yes, would love to have played football, but my mom was like, no, you'll blow your knee out and never play basketball again. Then there was uh, cross country, and no, thank you, I don't run. Like, I will play basketball for 10 hours a day, no problem. I did it my whole life. Every day of the summer, I'm at the court playing for eight, ten hours a day. That to me isn't running. That's playing basketball. Running from point A to point B, that's pointless to me. God in helped us to invent cars and bicycles so we don't have to run anymore. So no. So that left band and marching band. So I was in the marching band with my brother. So anyway, so I'm in the, I'm in the band, I'm in the choir, or the chorus at school, and we had some basketball games, and, and the chorus concert um, ended up being on the same night. The chorus and band concert was on the same night as a basketball game. So I went home, and I was like, Dad, the, these two are on the same night, so I'm not going to be playing in a band, and I'm not going to go to the concert. I'm going to go to the basketball game. And he goes, oh, no, you're not. I said, what do you mean? He said, you are, you are, there's no way you're skipping that concert and going to a basketball game. I said, well, no, basketball is more important to me. I really don't care about the concert. He goes, that doesn't matter. You made a commitment to the chorus and the band before you were part of the basketball team. Therefore, you fulfill, will fulfill your commitment at the holiday concert, not at the basketball game. And I was like, no. And we went back and forth for a while. And, you know, I was, at that time, probably about 6'3", 6'4", and my dad was 6'4", but my dad had about 150 pounds on me, so there was no winning that one. And so, 
okay. So then I had to go tell my basketball coach, hey, coach, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to play in the game. I have to go to the concert. He was not happy. So then he goes to the administration and he's like, uh, you're going to move the concert to tell us the band director. And they're like, no, we're not. And so it started this huge thing in my school, right? Well, it didn't really matter because it snowed and everything was canceled. <laughs> so, yeah. But my whole point in that was, you know, we, I, my dad's big thing for me was, you made a commitment first to this and you're not going to change it. You know, and I think in our culture today, and it, again, this doesn't, this isn't just one generation that does this. I think it's, it's all of us that we struggle with this now, especially now that there's social media and all this other stuff. FOMO is a real thing. This fear of missing out is a real thing for every generation, right? Where we don't want to make a hard commitment to something. I think we, what, we, what we find is that we all struggle with commitments. And this is what Jesus says in Matthew. So we're in Matthew 5, right? We're continuing in, in, the, in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5. Uh, we're going to be in verses 33 to 37 today. And in verse 33, this is what Jesus says. He says, again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the, to the Lord what you have sworn. Right? And what Jesus is saying there is, we all struggle with commitments. Right? Jesus starts off by telling them, look, you, you made a commitment. This is what God's word said. You have heard it said that this is, and this is what he says here when he says this is, you know, that, that you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. This is not a direct quote from the Old Testament. It's not. What Jesus is doing is he's, he's, he's paraphrasing a couple different verses in the Old Testament. A verse from Leviticus, a verse from Deuteronomy, and a verse from Numbers. All three of those verses speak into this idea of, of when you give your word and not swearing falsely, um, but giving your word to someone, you're to follow through on it. They all, all three of those verses say the same thing, that God wants us to keep our word. Why? Well, we'll get, to, we'll get to a deeper reason why in a minute, but one of the reasons why Jesus jumps on this is because, like I said before, every one of us struggles with this at some point in our lives. We struggle to keep our word. We told someone that we would be somewhere at a certain time, and we weren't there. We told somebody we would do something, and we would, we would get it done, and we didn't get it done, right? Like our, jo our bosses ask us, hey, I want this report by this time on this date. And we've all been there where that day and time comes, and that report is not ready. What are you going to do? You know, in Bible college, my professors, some of the professors were amazing. They were like, ah, whatever. If you don't get it in on time, not a big deal. Then I took my pastoral ministries class, and Dr. Cheney looked at us all, and he goes, if your paper or your assignment is not here at the beginning of this, like, th when it's due, like, at this time, it's a zero. No ifs, ands, or buts. And I remember, I remember some guys pushing him and being like, okay, and they come to him and be like, hey, I turned this in. And he's like, no, you get a zero. There's no, you cannot turn it in. There is no more, you're, it's a zero, and nothing's going to change that. And so he stops and he goes, listen, guys, I'm telling you this because when you work for a church, you go into pastoral ministries, you, I can't show up here on a Sunday morning and be like, hey, guys, um, I'm sorry, the message isn't ready yet. Can you come back in two hours? That's not going to fly, right? Well, you know what? My message isn't ready yet. Why don't, we, why don't we skip this week and I'll see you next week? It doesn't work that way. Right? And so, what, you know, he, he taught us this, this powerful lesson in commitment. But we all struggle with that at times, don't we? We tell our friends, oh yeah, I'll be at your party, or I'll be here, or I'll be there. And then something comes up, and we're not there. Or we just were like, you know what? Nah, I don't really feel like it today. I'm not going to do it. And I... I so the question is, what do we call someone who does this? Who is constantly telling us, oh, I'm going to be there, and they aren't? 
Somebody who constantly says, I'm going to do this, and they don't. What do we call them? Call them a liar, don't we? But here's the thing. Nobody teaches us how to lie, do they? Your parents didn't sit you down. I know my parents didn't sit me down and be like, okay, if you get caught in this, this is what you're supposed to do. If you get caught doing this, say something opposite so you can get away with it. My parents didn't have to teach me. I didn't have to teach my kids that, right? I didn't have to teach them that. They just know how to do it, right? I remember, I'll never forget, our oldest was caught with suntan lotion all over her. The bottle opened, suntan lotion all over the bathroom, and Becky's like, what is this? I don't know. How did this happen? I don't know. Well, what, what, what do you, I don't know. That's all she kept saying. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm like, you know, you opened it. You spread it all over the bathroom. It's all over you. You know what this is. I didn't teach her that. Right? They just know. And so what Jesus is saying is that when you say you're going to do something, do it. Be clear. Right? I think we've all faced this too, where we will text, our, you know, text somebody to do something. Like, hey, I'm going, thinking about going to this movie you know, tomorrow night, you in? Yeah, probably, they respond, right? Yeah, probably. All right, well, I'm going on Fandango. Do I buy one or two tickets? Yeah, you could probably do two, right? And then you text them back, all right, look, I, I need a no. Is this a yes or a no? And then the three dots pop up, and then they go away. And you're watching, and you're like, come on, I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta pull the trigger on this. And then the three dots come up again, and then they go away. And then they never respond. And you're like, okay, I guess I'm going to the movie by myself. Glad I didn't buy the extra ticket. Right? But we, we let your yes be yes and your no be no, Jesus says. And we'll talk more about that in a minute as well. But when we say we're going to do something, let's do it. Be clear about what's going on. Jesus goes on in verse 34 and to 36, and he says, But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not, make, do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. What Jesus is cluing into here and what he's leaning into here is to get to people to see is that even the Pharisees knew that they didn't always tell the truth. That they weren't always upfront and honest and that they didn't always do exactly what they said they were going to do. And so they had to figure out ways to get people to buy into what they were saying when they really were telling the truth. And so they were like, well, we can't make an oath to God. We can't say, well, I swear on God that I'm going to do this because then God's going to hold us accountable. So they tried to hide their words, and they said, okay, well, we'll swear by heaven, or we'll swear by earth, or we'll swear by the hairs on our head, or we'll swear by Jerusalem. And Jesus is like, that doesn't work either. Because if you're swearing by heaven, that's the throne of God, and he's there. If you're swearing by earth, well, that's God's footstool. So guess what? He's there. If you're swearing by Jerusalem, that's the great city. Or if you're going to swear by your head, you can't even change your hair color. Now, nowadays, that doesn't really fly, right? But we can change the outward appearance of our hair color. It doesn't mean our hair, I mean, ladies, you know this. I don't anymore. Um, but our roots begin to show rather quickly, don't they? Back when I used to bleach my hair, when I had hair, and I bleached my hair in that phase of life. They show pretty quickly. So you can't change that, right? As much as I would love to and try to, I can't grow a beard. And Becky and I have arguments about it all the time. I just don't think I've fully given it the college try, in my opinion. I can grow this, but anything outside here is patchy, and I look Amish. So it doesn't work so well for me. But I can't change that. Right? So Jesus is saying, you can't do that, so stop doing this. See, they, they found ways to show the people that they were being truthful. And Jesus keeps going on and saying that this system doesn't work. But we do the same thing. We may not swear by heaven or swear by the earth, but we do the same thing, don't we? 
All right, we use phrases like when we're talking to somebody and we say, listen, no lie, I saw the biggest whatever, right? Like I remember like, so in, in Bethlehem, they have music fest in August every year and it always coincided with the Eagles training camp at Lehigh University on the south side of Bethlehem. So every now and then, the football players, when they had a night off, would come down to music fest and walk around. And Okay, so no lie, right here we go, no lie. I'm standing at a concert and this short dude walks by me and bumps me. And I'm like, what's the deal? And I look up and it's Ricky Waters who used to be a running back for the Eagles in the 90s. And I'm like, oh, that's Ricky Waters. So like the next day I'm like, guys, no lie. Ricky Waters bumped into me at Music Fest, right? So what, but what does that say to my friends? So everything else that you've told me is a lie? So I can only believe 19%, 20% of what you say because you didn't say no lie before it? Right, or, or we use this one, seriously, seriously, you gotta hear this. How about the one, this one, we, we might get a little bit more, I'm not even kidding, right? I use this one a lot in my house. I'm not even kidding. She stomps one more time, I might chop her feet off. Right? Like, I'm just like, oh, stop slamming. I say that this is the one I say a lot, to be honest. This is the one that I say a lot. I cross my arms and I'm like, I said to Becky, I'm not even kidding. If that door slams one more time, I'm taking all the doors off the hinges. That is a typical line in my house. All the doors are still on the hinges, don't worry. I promise, I promise this happened. Let me be honest with you. Bro, let me be honest with you. Stop using emojis when you text. It's not too many, right? Or this one, this is probably the biggest one that everybody uses. Literally, like literally, literally. That is the best meal I've ever had. Really? You've eaten everything? That is literally the best outfit. I know every outfit, I've seen every person. That's the best outfit, literally the best outfit. Right? We, we do the same thing. We use these things, these words, these oaths, to swear by them, to tell the people that this is what we're gonna do. And Jesus has a solution to all this and it's super simple. In verse 30, 37, so this is Jesus' simple solution to this problem. He says, let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than that, anything more than a yes or a no. Anything more than that comes from evil. So yet your yes be yes and your no be no. And what that does, anything beyond that, what that does is any, if we say anything beyond that, yes, but blah, 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 or no, and then there's more to it, whatever it is, all it's doing is showing the person that we're talking to that we struggle with commitment. We struggle with committing to it. Look, I'm not saying that I'm perfect, that I don't struggle with commitment. There are plenty of things that I've committed to in my life and still commit to them, and I wake up and I'm like, I really don't want to do that today. Like, how do I get out of this? Right? How do I, how do I not do this? But let your yes be yes and your no be no, because when we, when we, do, when we say we're going to do something and we don't do it, it's our reputation and our credibility that are on the line. So if you say you're going to do something, just do it. And, and what Jesus is saying is when we do that, then it lets our, our reputation be all the validation that we need. That we will be people who do what they say we're going to do. I think there's three principles, and we'll talk about these for a little bit, and then, and then we'll wrap up. But there are three principles, three ways that we can, we can really walk through this and make sure that our yes means yes and our no means no. First, we need to be clear with our intentions. 
right? And I, and I think we, we all struggle with this, probably guys more so than girls, but, but we all struggle with this in, in, in some ways where we get talking and we're dreaming about things that we're going to do and what we want to do and how we're going to do them. And then we start making commitments that we, we just don't think we can or know if we're ever going to be able to follow through on, right? We make promises that we just don't know if we can live up to. I, I, I heard a guy talk about this, like growing up his dad always told them that they were going to go to Disney World. I'm going to take you to Disney World. I'm going to take you to Disney World. I'm going to take you to Disney World. It got to the point where they would ask his father, okay, when he would say, I'm going to take you for ice cream, okay, is this like Disney World ice cream or is this like real ice cream? Because their dad had lost all reputation with them. He goes, now, my dad did take, he said, he, my dad did take me to, to Dis take us to Disney World, but he goes, he didn't take us until I was 17 years old. And by then, his reputation with his kids had been ruined. And that's like a, in, in many ways, kind of a silly thing. But it's true, and that we do that. And so, we, you know, when people ask us, be upfront with our intentions. Look, I can do this or I cannot do this. Right? I mean, I think we've all been in those relationships where, where at one time or another, we're, we're, we're in that relationship and we, and we make a commitment, not even thinking about it, right? Like, guys, we'll say things like, because we don't know how to really process our emotions well, so we just say, I love you, or I'll never hurt you. And then two weeks later, the girl starts annoying you, and you're like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And then you break up. And she's like, but you said you were never going to hurt me. You're a liar. Right? So be clear with our intentions about what it is and what we plan on doing. The second one is, to, is when we do make a commitment and something happens that we can't fulfill that commitment, we need to ask to be released from that commitment. Right? We need to ask to be set free from that commitment. And it happens. Things happen. Look, you make a commitment and something comes up. Right? I've made commitments to people. I'm going to have lunch with you. And, and then, look, look, one of the girls gets sick or Becky needs, you know, she's got to take the girls and I got to watch the other one or something like that. Those things happen. Right? But we ask to be released from the commitment. We don't demand it. Right? Like, here, I'll, I'll use this illustration. So if I gave... Peter, if I gave you a watch for your birthday or just because, right? But then my phone broke and I don't have a watch and I need to be able to tell time. I'm not going to come to your house and break in and take the watch back. That'd be a little weird. Or next time I see you, shake your hand and be like, oh, that watch, let me, you know, just take it back and be like, well, my phone broke and I need, I need it. No, I, I would go to him and say, hey, Peter, look, you know, my, wa my phone broke. I need a, I need a watch. Can I, can I get that watch back? I mean, that sounds ridiculous. Like, who would do that? Like, you'd be a horror. <laughs> Just go buy a watch. But anyway, um, but every illustration breaks down at some point. But for this, it makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> like, we, we so often demand that commitment back or steal it back or just avoid saying anything instead of going and asking, hey, listen, this came up and I can't, I, can, we, can we reschedule? Can we move? Can we do something with this commitment? Or, hey, listen, I, you know, if you promised, like, you're going you're gonna to take somebody somewhere, give them a ride somewhere. Hey, listen, I, I cannot, I can't do this because of X, Y, or Z, whatever it is. But, hey, listen, I'm going to get you an Uber. I'll pay for it. I'll fulfill my commitment to get you there. Or, hey, I, I talked to so-and-so, they're going to be able to take you instead of me, right? We fulfill the commitment, but we also ask to be released from the commitment. Lastly, because look, if we have enough, let me say this first, if we have enough of those hard conversations of asking for that commitment back, guess what happens? That first principle of being clear with our intentions, we start to realize, you know what, I need to be clearer with my intentions, Right? When you have enough hard conversations about, hey, I need to have that commitment back, you're like, I don't want to do that anymore. Let me just be really clear with my intentions. I can't do that. 
And I know that's hard for people. There's, there are people, and I'm, I'm one of those people at times where you just, somebody asks you something, you're like, yeah, sure, I can do that. And then you start to think about it, you're like, wait a minute, no, I can't. Or you just say yes because you don't like saying no to people. Well, guess what? It's a lot easier to say no at the beginning than to go back and ask for that commitment back. Right? Or to do this last one, where if, you know, something does happen, ask forgiveness from broken commitments. You made a commitment and something came up or something happened and you didn't get in touch with them and you didn't ask for that commitment back. Go and ask for forgiveness. Be like, listen, this is what happened. I am so sorry. I know I made a commitment that I would be there or do this and I, and I broke that. Can you please forgive me? See, because when we do these three things, when we live out these principles, when we do this that Jesus called, it builds credibility with people. Not just people in our circle, but people outside of our circle. They see that. Then they get to realize, you're a person that I can trust. You're a person that I can see is credible. Because see, and, and we'll close with this, as followers of Christ, our word is hugely valuable to God. This is the whole reason Jesus put this in this message. It's because our word as followers of his is valuable to God. Because God is, one of his greatest attributes and qualities that we proclaim to people is what? That God is faithful. God is faithful. Well, here's the deal. How are people going to know that our God's faithful if we as people who claim to be followers of his, who walk with him, and all these things aren't faithful to the people around us? If we're constantly breaking our commitments to people left and right, and then we want to turn around and say, hey, Jesus loves you, and Jesus is faithful to be with you. They're going to look at us and go, well, if you follow him, how, do I, how, can I, how can I trust you that he is faithful if you're not faithful? So, as we live our lives, and again, this isn't, look, this isn't a thing where we're going to be faithful, and, and, and we're going to live this out, so that means we get more of God. No, we get all of God when we come to the, to the knowledge and the, and the understanding that we are sinners in need of a Savior and we need Jesus in our lives and we need his grace and his work on the cross to free us from those things. That's when we get all of God. But then when we have that and because, because of that, we live out our faithfulness for him. Because he is faithful to us, right? Like we talked about last week in 1 John 1, 9 where Jesus said, where uh, John says that God is faithful and just to forgive us from all unrighteousness because of Christ's work on the cross and, and our coming to him, right? And because God is faithful to do that, then we are faithful to live out our lives for him. And so being faithful is keeping our word and making our yes, yes, and our no, no, and not adding to that. And so when we do that and when we live that out for God, it's amazing what people see. When we struggle well with life together with people, and we do life authentically and transparently with people, when they say to us, hey, listen, I really could use help here. Yeah, I'll be there. And we show up. It goes a long way. Or, hey, I really need help with this. Look, I would love to help you. I just can't that day. But you let me know if you need help on any of these, at any of these times, and I'll be there. Be there. Do it. Let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that as you display your faithfulness, people will see the faithfulness of God through you. Jesus has a lot of really hard things to say. And next week we're going to dive into another one about loving our enemies. So buckle up. We're going to do this. But before that, this week, look, and we've, like I said before, we've been through some pretty heavy things that have hit us from all sides in the last few weeks. But, and <clears throat> again, I'm going to be honest with you. This week there have been some things that are coming up this coming week that Becky and I have sat down and been like, I don't know if we really want to do that. And I'm sitting there going, okay, 
Lord, thanks. Now I have to actually live out what I've been walking through, preparing to preach on Sunday. And we just said, no, this is our commitment. We've made a commitment to this. We're going to stick with it. We're going to do it. No matter how difficult it could be for us, we're going to do it. This week is going to be hard. I mean, I've heard this from a few of you. That you get done listening to one of these messages on whether it's anger or lust or whatever it is, your righteousness, all those different things that we've talked about so far, and you go home and, this, and the next week God is getting you tested and sharpening you left and right. This is not going to be any different. I know that. It's going to be a hard week where your commitments are going to be tested and they're going to be pushed. But just remember, Jesus calls us to that. Our yes be yes and our no be no. Let's live out the faithfulness that we have in God by displaying faithfulness to those around us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for today. We thank you for you and your love for us. Lord, we are so grateful for you and your faithfulness. Your faithfulness to each one of us, your faithfulness to, to love us despite our shortcomings and our failings. Lord, you made a promise, a covenant with us, and you have fulfilled it. And the parts that are left unfulfilled yet, we know you will fulfill. And so we are so thankful for that, Lord. And now, Lord, help us to be people who our yes is yes and our no is no. Help us to be challenged by you to live out what we say we're going to do. And then hopefully, Lord, our prayer is that through that, people would see your faithfulness and come to know you. And so, Lord, we just, again, are so thankful for you. Help us to walk in faithfulness. Help us to walk in our commitments and to live out those principles. And we just pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.